Kaixo, e, orenguan e, do emaral dionetan edo e, zera sola saldiontan bi gomidatu berez izango ditugu, bi gomidatuekin hitz egingo dugu, aura satz eta Lisa Rofnarrekin. Baino egiarran e, bereik zuzente dituzten pelikulaz gain e, edo bereik zuzente dituzten pelikula guztiek, do bi pelikula hauek, badiuzte bestain bat gonbidatu eta zerrenda luzegi izango litzake, hemen denak aipatzeko, baino denek badute eman komunean gauza bat eta da e, denek egin dutela musika elektronikoa eta denek e, denak emakumeak izateaz gain ba musika mota hauek sufritzen duten do pairatzen dituzten hainbat itzal len biktimak izan direla nolabait. Beraz e, aura ta Lisaren pelikula hauek nolabait e, figura hauek berriz ere gure egunerokora ekartzea dut helburu eta bizkat horri buruz eta pelikulei buruz zerbait gehiago jakitearren eta beraien egilei buruz zerbait gehiago jakitearren hementxe ditu gaur gurekin e, Good morning, Aura. Good morning, Lisa. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, I was just uh, speaking in Basque, but introducing very briefly that uh, we have a lot of guests this uh, for this conversation. Um, we have uh, Aura, uh, we have Lisa, both of them artists, um, and uh, presenting two films that uh, at the same time are presenting us um, a big list of uh, amazing artists, all of them women, um, that have been uh, practicing experimental music and uh, electronic music. So, um, maybe it's a, a very, I don't know, um, simple question to start, but could you, both of you, explain what is your relation with uh, this kind of music, this experimental electronic, electroacoustic music? Or do you want to start? Lisa, do you want to? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I was very fortunate in that I had been working with, um, I suppose I'd been working in sound and film for a while, but I was in the right place at the right time when the um, Aramics machine was found and um, acquired for the Science Museum. And so I made a film about Daphne Oram which kind of led to an interest in women and electronic music and this idea of instantiating a new soundscape, which in turn uh, allows for a new kind of listening. And that lineage is beautifully traced in Lisa's film. I'm so honored to be screening alongside her film and all of those um, musicians and composers that I admire so much and that I've been thinking about for so many years. Um, and who have really informed my practice beyond the kind of sonic and visual portraits that I've made in relation to these um, musicians. So in effect, yeah, I made a film about Daphne Oram and sound projects with Pauline Oliveros and um, Laurie Spiegel and other projects with Laurie as well. And then this film, which is the most recent in a series of works around women composers. And this one is the first in Spanish, so it features Beatriz <coughs> Ferreira who's originally from Argentina. Um, and so we spoke in Spanish. So, yeah, I, guess, I think that covers it. Mm -hmm. Lisa? I've always been interested in confronting narratives with counter narratives. It's something that I study political science and I've always been kind of th th thinking and rethinking what is truth, what is history. Um, so when I discovered a timeline of female pioneers in electronic music, I um, was immediately captivated. And then I think, obviously, the sound, I've always been very interested in music, but um, I think what really interested me um, was this idea that they were em emancipated by this technology. So for me, this story um, drew me in the sounds, the women themselves, they were women with agency, they were independent, um, they were persistent, and um, they struggled in a way that I also felt, feel like I've struggled as a female filmmaker. So there were many different angles that drew me to the subject. But of course, um, the sounds themselves have uh, a big part to play in my initial interest in, in the subject. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, both of you, um, 
have been working also on different uh, uh, artworks related to, to some creation, uh, related to music more or less, uh, some of them really straightly, um, some of them like more in a diagonal or transversal way. But what do you find interesting in this musical genre, if you can call it like this, because I always thought that experimental music is like a big hole where everything that is not experimental can be put on um so um what is what becomes attracting uh, or what is attracting for, uh, to you um, from this kind of music or this approach of making music aura um go ahead no no you go ahead <laughs> um for me when I was interested in electronic music, I suppose the way into that was this idea of synthetic sound or drawn sound or a sound from nothing. And so in the case of Daphne Oram, um, you know, these, these squiggles, this kind of graphic language that is then sonified and rendered as sound is magicking up sounds that didn't exist um, beforehand. And so I suppose in some ways that really resonated with me in terms of this idea of a feminist notation, a feminist soundscape and a feminist mode of listening, you know, kind of approaching the, the idea of sound not as a space where we necessarily rely on pre-existing standards, pre-existing sound languages, but actually instantiate and bring into being, bring into speech new sounds. So really for me, electronic music does that in a way that, um, even in Beatrice, Beatrice Ferreira's music, which is electroacoustic, so it's more music concrete, but, it, but it's about a, a different kind of listening. Um, and so for me, I suppose a lot of the advertising shots of these women, they're often shown alongside their synthesizer, you know, modular synthesizer with a hand on the dial and kind of the ear tilted towards the dial. And it's this idea of an experimental listening practice trying to bring forth sounds that haven't been heard in that way beforehand and and that opens up a new a, a new i think a new way of understanding the world to some degree because if we're if we're free of this idea of an embodied sound or a sound that is very much grounded and rooted in certain kinds of bodies certain kinds of hierarchies then this kind of new and and fresh and unexpected unfamiliar way of listening is is quite radical i think yeah I, I absolutely agree with what you've just said i think i'm particularly it make this kind of sound these kind of sounds this kind of music really makes me think and i think that that's it's something that is unlike my you know my intro to electronic music was really through dancing and so it was really connected to movement but i feel that this kind of um this kind of music is more um i listen to it in stillness um, and yeah, it's, it's discovering this music has really changed the way that I hear things, the way that I listen, the way that I, um, experience sound and the world around me. This sentence, this music uh, makes me think, I think it's uh, very important to understand both of your films. Um, <clears throat> But in fact, and when watching the films, one starts to think that, uh, at which point uh, all these uh, uh, big artists, uh, Bebe Baron, uh, Pauline Oliveros, Mariana Mascher, Elian Radic, uh, Susan Siani, uh, Beatriz Ferreira, obviously, the Leather Richard, now, all of them were somehow uh, forgotten by the official music history because they were women or because they were doing this kind of music because uh, at some point as you mm -hmm. said they, uh, the club music somehow gained um, all the space that originally this kind of uh, experimental approach uh, of making music has uh, been i don't know um, discovering uh, more or less so uh, what point uh, how do you think how this is related this aesthetic this approach of making music and um, and the, the the fact of being women also that increases probably this difficulty to show up or somehow to present this kind of artwork to the world. Lisa. 
<laughs> okay, I'll go first this time. Um, well, I think that the reason that, you know, I've been thinking so much about, you know, why were these women forgotten or why were these women written out of the history of early electronic music? And I think um, my feeling is that it's really more of a storytelling problem rather than um, a genre problem or an experimental mm -hmm. nature problem. I think that the way that we t have told stories generally we tend to have a beginning, a middle, an end. We tend to have a hero. We tend to, that hero tends to be white mm. male. Um, and we have this fascination with this idea of genius. Whereas in fact, I think as, as Daphne Oram, um, one of the women in the films talks about, she says, why are we so obsessed? Or she, I'm paraphrasing here, but she talks about why are we so obsessed with this idea that one person is responsible for an invention it's just generally not the way it works so my feeling is that if i think the the reason that i chose to tell the story in the way that i did where it's not 100 percent chronological where characters and stories weave in and out of each other um was in in direct relation to try to confront that type of storytelling which i think is marginalized not only women but people of color um and um so yeah so my feeling is that if we if we open up the way that we tell stories and if we open up the way that we um tell or yeah understand history we'll we'll find lots of 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 important players in that story mm -hmm. yeah i mean i guess your film um addresses this really well i think it's in the beginning with um Laurie Spiegel, if i'm not mistaken but the idea that electronic music kind of opened all these doors, um, you know, up until then, if you wrote a piece of music, you required an orchestra, you required a whole set of um, uh, kind of, I guess, uh, portals of access in order to manifest those sounds. And in some ways, electronic music was suddenly short circuiting um, those hierarchies. And so, you know, a lot of people, you know, Eliane Radig, had her synthesizer in her kitchen. You know, there are lots of other ways of suddenly sounding and hearing the sounds that one has in one's head without relying so much on, on performers. And so I think that idea of electronic music as a kind of em in part emancipating what was always there. Women were always composing. It's just that the structures weren't allowing them to sound, you know, to kind of be heard. I do think of my film practice uh, as one very small way of changing that story and making visible and audible and putting into circulation those other sounds and other voices. And so in some ways I've, I've made these films both as a kind of pretext to have those conversations and, and look closer and listen closer to these people that I admire that inform my thinking but also in kind of putting them out there. I mean, it's quite small and my, my, um, you know, my distribution circuit is more kind of art world. Um, but, but even so it's about kind of, it is a form of amplifying and uplifting those other voices. And I, and I feel both that I'm in conversation with them, they're in conversation with each other. And now I'm in conversation with Lisa, which is great, but you know, it's this idea of some kind of, as you're saying, more distributed notion of, of, amplifying and, and making visible and those histories yeah, and the also, canons, you know they're not they're, they're not static they should be reconsidered and recalibrated but i also think aura that your films are so great because you're also creating archive you know you're creating what you're basically creating what you you are witness and you are creating films that bear witness to this these incredible women so your films play many roles but definitely the fact that you have gone out and filmed these women um, or not all of them, but um, is, is, I think, a great gift to, to, to the world. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I totally feel that way about your film. Maybe if I could just return, if that's okay, Chavi, I'm just going to return the compliment. But I think what's amazing about Lisa's film is, you, you know, the first two thirds or so, or maybe more, is archival footage, lesser scene footage, which mm. some of it I hadn't come across. Um, and actually this portrait, both of the musicians and, and what they were doing, but also the kind of listening. So Eliane Radig talks about hearing airplane drones and Delia Derbyshire about hearing sirens. So when we were talking earlier about a kind of new way of listening to the world and to sounds, not just music. Um, but then I don't know if I should 
tell the big reveal, but there's, there's new footage of some of these musicians um, towards the end. And it's so moving, and especially the scene of Eliane Radig listening, listening to the music that she has composed. So that beautiful kind of resonance again around um, making audible, you know, making sound into the world, but also really the pleasure of, of uh, yeah, the, the joys of listening. I think that's something really beautiful in one of those final scenes. Thank you. Yeah, you both talk about <clears throat> voices behind this this uh, uh, amazing composers and um, what do you think is the most relevant input of, of these composers the brilliant composers to the music history in the sense that uh, all these uh, musical uh, approaches have been uh, uh, i don't know if discovered by impulse uh, after second world war uh, so it had uh, like a strong um, political um, background somehow uh, because it was uh, an, as an answer to the great noise that the world war um, uh, happened to be and uh, somehow the feeling when listening to this uh, uh, woman composers today is that uh, um, i don't know if you agree with that but uh, that uh, if the let's say the male composers were more into the vanguard like as um, supporting this kind of propaganda uh, idea of going forward uh, trying to create a new new sounds like uh, uh, some of them in a very uh, sometimes even in a in a macho position in the same like okay we're like uh, uh, driving this uh, ship now as as fast as possible and suddenly uh, a few decades later when we start to listen the works of uh, Pauline uh, Mariana Mascher, Eliane Radic, but well, probably all of them, including Beatriz, there is a sense that uh, there is something which is not slightly the same. No, it's like uh, um, like they do, they are proposing a bigger effort on listening uh, and not like uh, and not putting all this force. Um, a straight force, let's say. I don't know. It's just a feeling. But uh, what do you think um, is the most relevant input of these composers? I mean, I feel that obviously Pauline Oliveros's deep listening philosophy opens up to this idea of, of of a different kind of listening. You know, so there's vocal listening where you're listening to something. Like now, I'm speaking in the voice is the kind of focal point and, and global or inclusive listening where you allow other sounds in. And in the opening of my film, Beatrice does this beautiful, very kind of cheeky, playful performance with the, with the creaking door. And really what I feel she's doing is opening the bandwidth of, of the kind of listening. So it's not the door as a binary open shut and maybe a little squeak in between. She's articulating the gradations and the spectrum of sound in between with the door. And so it's this really beautiful idea of, again, kind of um, thinking of, of a much more kind of generous, attentive um, and, and fine tuned listening with many, many, many gradations. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it is a certain sensitivity. I read it as a feminist sensitivity. I read it within that lineage even if some of those composers wouldn't explicitly declare themselves within that lineage, but, but I do see it as connected. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think you and I even talked about this, Aura, when I interviewed you about just whether there is such a thing as a feminist way, yeah, feminist sound. Um, and it is true that like, um, this emphasis on listening is is perhaps less, or I don't know. I, I think it's 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 dangerous to generalize in in these ways. But um, mm -hmm. yes, perhaps there is such a thing as a perhaps there is a more feminine um, articulation in 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 these composers' work. But what I would say is that uh, that despite that, what I think is so interesting about all, all these women is just how idiosyncratic their output was and, and their interest as well. So yes, there is this overall, overarching um, emphasis on listening, but in their expression of that, uh, of what they hear is so unique and different. And I, I think that that's, um, 
one of the most surprising things that I discovered in, in making of this film is just how, you know, it's, it's easy to say, oh, women in electronic music, but just how different each of these composers is. Um, so let's talk about sensibility. Uh, how all this mm, um, world of sensibility uh, coming from all these composers for a lot of decades of work, um, how, how do you uh, include this kind of sensibility or how do you, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if you, if you include this the, the right word, but uh, in your filmmaking, um, uh, what, how the, your filmmaking is related to the sensibility or let's say, now we were talking about listening, how do you think your films uh, 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 make listen? Well, I definitely wanted to, in in my filmmaking and the way that I constructed and wrote this film and um, built built it in the edit, I definitely wanted the film to reflect the radical nature of, um, of the music. So that was a very important thing that the film match in some way or another the, the subject. Um, and definitely also really wanted for people to have the time to actually hear the music because a lot of times in music documentaries, you just kind of have a lot of voices over the sounds. So it was very important to me to have moments of listening. Um, and so in that way, it was kind of paying respect to the ideas that these women have put forth in terms of, of, of how we listen and, and how carefully we listen. Yeah, I mean, I have made sound work. So like the piece I was mentioning with um, Pauline Oliveros and Laurie Spiegel is, is a piece for telephone. So you just listen rather than kind of listen and see. <clears throat> but in all of my films, similarly, I'm, I'm very sensitive to the idea of allowing space for the sounds to take precedence over the voice and over, over meaning, you know, over kind of semantic communication in that way. Um, and then maybe something in the way that the voice inflic inflects the sound, you know, the, the voice or what is said makes you listen differently. It's almost like a score, an instructional score of sorts, because suddenly you're listening, paying attention differently. Um, so as I said with um, Beatrice, she's talking about the door and you, and you suddenly pay attention to the door very differently. Um, in the way that I edited that film in particular, there are gaps with um, no image. So obviously if you're in a cinema, you, you know, you're kind of enveloped by the sounds and, and the title is making a diagonal with music, which is something that she talks about and she works a lot with sound spatialization. So you kind of need to, at some points when you're um, listening to that, you know, the visuals are either intention or work against that idea of what the sound is doing, there's a kind of friction, a generative friction, and other times it's in sync and it kind of flows with it. But I'm quite interesting, interested in playing with both of those. So there's both a kind of connection to the image in the film. So the sound and image are, are, are woven together and at other times they're in a kind of tension or there's a bit of pull. You know, they're not completely in sync and I find that very generative because it allows you to listen and look differently. Um, one of um, one of, a, of the biggest concerns uh, right now with music uh, uh, probably is a question of uh, functionality. Um, it seems like um, in our contemporary life, uh, music, uh, especially by I don't know, especially or at least uh, uh, influenced by the, by neo. Um, ways of listening using uh, digital platforms etc like uh, uh, all music becomes uh, very functional and in fact uh, uh, probably this is related also to, to the um, uh, proliferation of audiovisual um, documents um, and the more or less more um, uh, how to say um, um, I know the changing value of the of the music itself. It looks, uh, it seems that the, everything has to be related to an image, and um, 
for instance, the whole culture of the video clips, etc., uh, that at the beginning was only a, like a pop thing, and right now it seems like it has uh, uh, colonized uh, some any kind of music. Um, and uh, one, when listening to uh, these composers um, working, starting to work from 50s and 60s, um, it seems to have the feeling that uh, music has a totally different meaning for them. Um, so how, how do you think this, this uh, um, I don't know, a strange tension between um, becoming functional uh, in order to, I don't know, uh, create some kind of feeling, but also support some kind of discourse, political or, or not, um, even commercial discourse. And um, what do you think, that, what, what, what should we learn from this music, from these composers nowadays? Hello? <laughs> well, again, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I experience music in the way that you're describing. I think I'm still um, just listening uh, rather than watching visuals with listening. Um, but I think that there's, there's space for everything and there's space for all kinds of different experiences of the way we hear and listen to music. But I definitely feel, again, just going back to this idea of listening, I think that the the main takeaway for me in uh, in discovering these women and in telling their stories is just you know to to make sure that you listen and especially for things that 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 have traditionally been left out. I think that's the the main thing for me. But in terms of the new ways that people are experiencing music, I mean, right now we're going through this very strange thing. But I, I still I still feel that people really love to experience music live and. Think that people are really craving that right now um but yeah I, I don't um i don't know if it's a generational thing but i don't feel that um i don't feel that the function of music is any different i feel like music has always been um i guess it's such a personal experience but i think music makes people feel connected and good and um i don't think the way that people you know, whether they're listening to it on Spotify or whether listening to it on YouTube, I don't think that that changes um, the way that the, 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 the true function of music, which I think is to, um, to connect us to each other and to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, your point around the kind of functionality of music, I, I guess, like, in some ways, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming maybe what you're pointing to is also this notion that somehow sounds have become background, background mm -hmm. music. You, know, you go into a shop or a cafe or whatever, and there's always sound in the background. And then uh, maybe there's a kind of ever increasing cacophony of the world. You know, the world is getting louder. So, and our attention economy, you know, this idea that whatever we listen to is somehow whatever we pay attention to is monetized. I mean, maybe that's, if I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, one of the issues. But like Lisa, I feel that there are other ways forward and other transformations in the ways in which we're listening. Uh, many of us are attuned to, say, our phones vibrating to small sounds, actually. We're not just hearing loud sounds. We're listening um, and looking. Like, if I think of say um you know via like cinema on on the screen you know watching online on demand with subtitles i think there's a new kind of sensitivity where we're like listening and reading there's a new literacy around how we watch films and listen to films that's quite interesting that i guess draws on questions of access and you know people that are hard of hearing that maybe need subtitles but a lot of us are using subtitles just as a kind of way of I don't know, listening slightly differently. So I, I feel like the, the economy and ecology of attention and of listening is definitely changing and music is part of that wider change and it's within that, but it's also, um, I feel quite optimistic and hopeful about, about the way it's being, it's being transformed and where it's heading. I think there's some really interesting music out there. 
And as always, there's always a kind of pessimism. You know, even when these women were making their early electronic music, you know, someone like um, Laurie, you know, or Daphne or I'm, you know, talking about electronic music being, or being, um, there's a, there was a kind of threat that electronic music would be cold and inhuman and would lack the warmth of, of music. And actually, you know, if you look at the Aramics machine and Daphne's music, it's hand wrought. You literally feel that it's hand wrought. And for Laurie as well, electronic music isn't this thing that takes us away from our humanity. It can take us mm -hmm. towards it. You know, it's like this kind of ladder or portal that actually allows us to access something different, a different dimension of our humanity. Um, so I don't feel that it's necessary. I think there's a kind of doomsday reading of technology more generally and music within that, where we kind of think of it as alienating us further and further. And it does obviously some of that, but it also does other things. There are counter ways in which, as Lisa says, it generates communities. Um, it connects people. It enables people to listen together, even when they're listening apart. I think there is a kind of collective listening that's, that's interesting. And the pandemic has done a lot to recalibrate our ears, you know, from the sudden silence and the lack of, um, you know, motors, engines, uh, shaking the world to like listening to birdsong and listening to music in a very different way. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling, but you know what I mean. Well, we keep this invitation to listening to become or keep uh, being uh, human somehow uh, to thank you i think th this we all already did half an hour um thank you very much lisa aura um thank you eh esker eskerik asko zera eh gure galderi erantzutegatik eta bereziki em bueno gonbida penau aprobetzatu nahi dugu benetan musika entzuteko eta musika egiteko modu berri hauei espazio eskini eten konposatzailea harrigarri hauek eta bai aurak eta bai lisak beraien film zoragarrietan sister with transistors eta hacer una diagonal con la música va eh, konposatzen ya hoy eskinetako bi film hauetan benetan badagolako eh, ez soilu geure burua baizik ba, eta gure ingurunea entzuteko gonbidapen berezi bat hartara eh, bueno ba ba gomendio baino ezin dugu egin ba ikuspuntu jaialdian bitartean ba pelikula ikusteko ongo diren aukera guten guztietan eh, ez galtzeko aukera, bereziki entzute bat gustoko bali moduzuek, bereziki musika gustoko bali moduzue, beraz, eh, bueno, gombi da pena luzatuta garatzen da. Eh, thank you very much again, eskerrik asko, Lisa, ahora, eh, eta beste arte, see you soon. Yeah, I wish, you soon. I'd love to be there, thank you. <laughs> Take care, stay safe. Thank you. Bye.